Ciao, my name is Umberto Mucci and this is With Italia News, a podcast about Italy during coronavirus times. Today is Thursday, June 2nd, 2022 and today is holiday here in Italy. We celebrate La Festa della Repubblica. Today Italy celebrates the form of state we chose with the referendum in which on June 2nd, 1946, Italians voted to change from monarchy to republic. After 85 years of the reign of the Savoy dynasty, including 20 years under fascist dictatorship, Italian citizens voted for a constitutional republic. Uh, the climate in Italy was tense, the vote taking place amid the rubble of World War II, which had recently ended. For the first time, both men and women were called to the polls. From that moment on, voting in Italy was carried out by universal suffrage. But not all Italians were able to vote in 1946. Many, in fact, were prisoners of war in, uh, in Allied camps, while those who survived the internment camps in Germany were slowly beginning to return. Also excluded from voting were the inhabitants of the province of Bolzano, now in the region of Trentino to Adige, which had been annexed by, by Germany back then after the creation of the Republic of Salò and was under Allied rule in 1946. The same happened in Trieste, now in the region of Friuli Venezia Giulia, which was under international administration back then. Those of June 2 and 3, 1946, were the first elections after 22 years of fascism, and voters of legal age 21 years and, and older at the time were given two ballots. The first was the institu institutional referendum, and the second for the election of deputies to the Constituent Assembly, which would later write the Italian constitution depending on the outcome of the vote, i.e. whether the Republic or the monarchy won. There were 12,718,641 Italians who voted for the Republic, or 54.3% of the electorate. In the North, in almost all major urban centers, most citizens expressed a preference for the Republic. The vote was more conservative in the South, where predominantly the orientation was in favor of the monarchy. Less than a month after the referendum, Enrico de Nicola was appointed the first president of the Italian Republic, and Alcide de Gasperi was the first prime minister. In keeping with tradition after the flag raising ceremony, today the president of the Republic also laid a laurel wreath at the unknown soldier at the Altare della Patria in Rome's Piazza Venezia in tribute to the fallen soldiers. Following these, there were also today the passage of the magnificent 10 airplanes of the Frecce Tricolori in the sky over the center of Rome. Finally, after the two years stop due to the pandemic, today there was again along the Via de Fori Imperiali one of the most striking moments of June 2nd, the military parade in which all the Italian armed forces participate. The parade was opened this year by a representation of doctors and health personnel. This year, in addition to the many Italian flags, they were also parading UN, EU and NATO flags, symbolizing which side a country is on. The national anthem was performed by the musical group Il Volo, accompanied by the music band of the Italian Armed Forces. <clears throat> Starting yesterday, Italy does not require any more for arrivals from the US to show proof of either recent vaccination or recovery from COVID or a recent negative PCR or rapid antigen test. Things are getting better and I see around Rome many, many, many American tourists, which of course make me and above all them very happy. The 2022 Super Smart Society report reviews 22 benchmark countries on topics such as robotics, bioeconomy, metaverse, digitization, deco decarbonization and ecological transition. <clears throat> the report reveals an Italy with some important strengths, such as the bioeconomy and the ability of our researchers to produce scientific excellence, but at the same time held back and with great opportunities to be seized in terms of the, of the ability to build a solid ecosystem of innovation, an essential condition for accelerating the path to sustainable development. The report makes four proposals for Italy. First, Italy must direct recovery plan resources toward projects that can maximize the innovation potential that already exists in the country. Second, create a virtuous mechanism to translate our scientific research primacy into concrete innovation. It is then necessary to transform Italy into a country for unicorns by promoting reforms to support innovative entrepreneurship and venture capital financing. Finally, launch a new deal of skills to prepare the Italian citizenship and companies of today and tomorrow to thrive in a digital and sustainable society. 
According to this report, out of 22 countries surveyed in first place is the United States, while Italy is far below in 18th place. The report also measured an ecosystem's ability to protect the innovation it produces and turn innovative ideas into new business realities. Considering the number of startups related per million inhabitants of each country, Italy has 234 of them. Not an exceptional value, but still higher than the EU average, which stands at 190. <clears throat> Another report just released concerns Italian agri-food, which is in good health despite pandemic. In 2021, Italian exports in the sector reached the record threshold of 52 billion euros, thanks mainly to the driving force of food and beverages, plus 11.6%, but the performance was also positive for agricultural products, plus 8.8%. The United States is certainly the leading export market for Italian products, with 9.6% of the total worth 148 billion euros, a good result that places Italy among the top 10 countries for international trade. All these considerations does lead to outlining a picture that makes the current year look like a period still characterized by the trend of growth, plus 19.5% between January and March compared to the same period last year, although showing downward risks related to the unknowns of the international context and the price increases of agricultural commodities due to the significant energy costs following both the pandemic first and the Russian-Ukrainian conflict later. In this difficult context, however, Italian performance is once again proving positive as wine, olive oil and pasta bring Italian excellences to tables around the world. <clears throat> In 2021, their total exports accounted for 22.4% 20, uh, of total agri-food exports, standing at uh, 11.7 billion uh, euros, up 7% from 2020. Agri-food is moving toward the future of increasing sustainability, equity, health and respect for the environment. In Italy too, the new agriculture is already there. Connected farm machinery and blockchain are making the supply chain more efficient, sustainable, responsible and transparent. Let me end this episode of With Italian News with two small pieces of good news that I feel are appropriate for a day of celebration like, the, like today. The first is that uh, Aosta Valley student Giulia Pession, 19 years old, is the new world champion in philosophy. A student at the High School of Classics, Music and Art in Aosta, she won the title in Lisbon, Portugal, beating 87 other finalists from 42 nations. A round of applause for Giulia, who, reading her words uh, in an interview she gave, at her age is way smarter than a lot of people my age. The second good news is about an Italian-American, Jerry Cardinale, whose investment firm Redbird Capital Partner has bought Italian Serie A soccer champions uh, Milan AC, which incidentally appends to be the team I root for. We are the champions and now our owner is an Italian-American. Can you imagine how happy I am? These are the first words of the Philadelphia-born Cardinale. For me, it's a little personal, it's a bit of homecoming. I apologize because I don't speak Italian. My mom's family is called D'Annunzio. I asked her, why don't I speak Italian? She replied that in those days, to integrate, Italian said to speak English. I will do my best to speak Italian and start lessons, but the first words learned are Forza Milan. Well, I'm into that, President Jerry. Viva l'Italia, my friends. Happy June 2nd, Buona Festa della Repubblica to you all, my friends. I'll see you here on With Italian News next Thursday, June 9th. Please stay safe and take care. Ciao from Rome.